When this next comedian takes the stage, you're going to think to yourself, did I see him in a mattress commercial? Guess what you did? This guy's been in a mattress commercial. Yeah. He's also the host of the, of the Laugh Finder podcast. Please give it up for Tommy Simbazo. Yay. Yay. Hi, everybody. Oh, this guy, are you guys excited to be here to MAGFest? Yeah. To join tournaments and games you're going to be crushed at by 12-year-old children? Oh. I am so looking forward to that. that I'm going to enter the Overwatch tournament and probably never play Overwatch again. I'm like, I'm so good at Genji. I'm an edgelord. I just play <laughs> fucking Reaper. Uh, so I'm used to, like, uh, I, I get, like, and does anybody have intro music at their job? Because being a comedian, you have it. Nobody? No? No strippers here? That's the two. It's comedians and strippers. And I didn't wipe down this mic stand, so I guess I'm going to tell some jokes. <laughs> but, like, that, like, ladies, have you ever been, you ever seen a male strip show? No. You sound so disappointed. <laughs> no. Like, it's like, well, surprise. <laughs> you should have paid more. <laughs> but you've been? Yeah. Have, you, have you been? Have you been? Have you, uh, any, have you been? Oh, let me, let me tell you, lady. Well, the guys, I know. We're all fucking perverts. But some women have couth, right? And you've been. But, but there is a, there's, a total, there's a total difference between male strip shows and female strip shows. I'll tell you, there is no no-touching rule when it comes to male strippers. Yeah, it, they come out, and it's like, ladies, give it up for chocolate thunder. And he comes out, pound, pound. Pow, 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 pow. And you're just like, okay, 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 stop it, Mr. Thunder! Here's your dollar! Right, but guys, like, we've been, like, we, how many guys here have been to see female strippers? Okay, there, there, and there, here come your mothers. There they are. This, these guys here. Your mother's like, I took them. Let's take your son to work day. This is my mother, Chastity. Uh, so, but they're, like, we've been told, but, like, like, TVs and movies and stuff, we've been told that it's this super sensual, sexy experience. It is not, okay? This is what we get. They're like, they're like, gentlemen, give it up for cinnamon. And she comes out like, she's my cherry pie. Skip, 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 skip. Eee, eee, eee. Like, what the fuck was on that pole? What does she know about the girl's vagina that was on stage before her? She's like, fuck no, Destiny's pussy got teeth. She's like, huh, so when ya? <laughs> but I remember the first time I ever had intro music, I was at like this, uh, it was this gritty urban hip hop club in Chicago, right? And there was like, there was a DJ. He had like turntables and he's mixing on the ones and twos, right? And they were like, the, the guy was very aggressive, right? He was like, yo, motherfuckers, make some noise for my man, Mr. Tommy Sinbazo. And I had to give a cut sign to the DJ. And I was like, holy shit, that was awesome. <laughs> and it got me thinking more jobs should have intro music for whatever the fuck you're doing, right? Like, ma'am, what's your name? Taylor. Taylor, and what do you do for a living, Taylor? Oh, <sighs> <sighs> Grab a chair, fellas. Grab a chair. <sighs> All right, Taylor. What do you do for a living? Well, uh, I work school for graphic design. This is going to be a long story, isn't it, Taylor? <laughs> I have 20 minutes, Taylor. <laughs> then I'm going to go get drunk and play virtual lawn until I puke. <laughs> What's in that? I'll take it. I took an emergency earlier when I paid $15 for a barbecue burger. Awesome. You have a Not flaring up now. <laughs> <laughs> so you went to school for graphic design. What do you do to, for a paycheck? <laughs> um, well, you know, I got hired at a job for graphic design, and it turned out that I still do toilet. They said, actually, we're at a graphic designer. Taylor, what the fuck do you do for a living? <laughs> 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 they hired you to be a graphic designer. What were you going to graphically design? Bibles or something? What were you selling? Signs? Oh, si who sells door-to-door -door signs? Who goes up going, excuse me, pardon me, it's the lady of the house at home. Uh, 
And then you throw dirt on their carpet and you go, I guess I have to come in and make a sign that says there's dirt here. So what you're saying is, this is a very long story for saying unemployed. It's fine. You're a lady of leisure. That's what my grandmother called it. Oh, so this happened last. What did you do before that? Patron services manager for what is what the fuck is that? <laughs> Taylor, I am I am resenting asking you. I did ask you. I didn't know you were crazy. <laughs> it's okay. All right, give it to me. Give it to me. you. Worked at a theater. Oh, patron services theater, a uh, person who donates to said theater or theater company, and you help them by giving them popcorn? I, what the fuck is that? Sure. <laughs> All right, so this is Taylor. God, here we go, guys. This is Taylor's intro music. <laughs> Coming into work at whatever the fuck she does. <laughs> Y'all motherfuckers ready for some door-to-door -door sign sales? Here comes Taylor's! See, what actually happened was it was Tuesday, and I broke a nail, and then I went in, and they didn't have any more cheese. And I'm like, how am I supposed to sell them cheese? And they said, go milk a cow, and there was no cows there. So I had to grow a cow, and then milk it. You know how hard it is to grow a cow? That bitch! <laughs> Well, that ate up a good 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> or if you're like, you're a brain surgeon or something, you'd be like, now enter in the operating room, Dr. Hibbert. <laughs> so, there's no room to walk on this fucking state. <laughs> Let's cut this bitch's head open, yo. <laughs> Which I never want to hear my brain surgeon talk like that, right? I don't want him sitting there in front of a CAT scan of my head, like, damn, son, you got tumors all up in this bitch. Like exhibits there, it's like pimp your tumors. <laughs> I heard you like chemo, so I gave chemo to your ki <laughs> I crossed the line when I did brain tumors. <laughs> or ladies, you're OBGYN. We're gonna do it anyway. That's not there's no plan B. Here we go. <laughs> I'ma slip a pinky in it, girl. Of course, that might be what happened. I have no fucking clue. I've never been invited. I never got that golden ticket, right? Have you ever, do you know what goes on in OBJ? No, no, it's like a fucking mystery, right? For all we know, you ladies open up the door, there's a trail of rose petals leading in. There's scented candles lit, copies of Fifty Shades of Grey all over the place, right? You're there's soft jazz playing. Your doctor's there wearing nothing but a terry cloth robe that comes to here, and it says, the love doctor. He turns around drinking a glass of Gavassier like, oh, <laughs> I didn't see you there. Please come in and make yourself uncomfortable. <laughs> right? Because, guys, if we had to go to the OBGYN, it would be a totally different entrance for our doctor, right? Because, first of all, we'd be scared shitless because we're wearing nothing but a paper robe and we're in this position. We're just shaking like one of those dogs in that Sarah McLachlan commercial, like, in the eyes of the angels, let them show. Right? And then the lights would turn off like, Sweet. And a smoke machine would start up, like, tsh, 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 tsh. <laughs> and then lasers be like, pew, 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 pew. And then music would start, like, <laughs> and then you hear the announcer, ladies and gentlemen, now entering exam room for a graduate of Johns Hopkins University, weighing in at 235 pounds. Give it up for Dr. Freddie Finger Bang Goldstein. He come in like Triple H, like, I won't go down without a fight. He wouldn't even use anesthesia. He'd just knock you out with a folding chair. you wake up with your shirt on inside out and a glove still in you. <laughs> Taylor, do they use anesthesia at the OBGYN? No. no? That's just Dr. Hoxtable then? <laughs> yeah, that's a cold shoe. You're just too much Taylor, too much information. <laughs> No, it's a cold shoehorn. It actually, it's, it's, his, it's called a caliper. And they stick it right in. He doesn't even tell you it's coming. He goes, here, look at the birdie. And then she shoves it right in. I imagine it's the same way that they take pictures of toddlers. And there's a puppet. No? Okay. <laughs> Are you guys a couple? 
How long have you guys been together? Two, give it up for that, two years. It's adorable. Do you guys live together? Oh. Uh, how long did, was it that you moved in? Let me grab my chair. Here we go. Why? Don't do fucking crowd work at MAGFest. Three days. We knew each other for a while. We were friends. Okay. Who got evicted? <laughs> Neither. So you both were like, we just fucked last night. Grab all your shit and move it in here. <laughs> You, okay. <laughs> Apparently that's the only way you can have sex is if you're living with the person. Makes total sense. How many people here have had a bad relationship? Oh Clap if you've ever, you'd be surprised. I'm not asking about Taylor's bad relationship. <laughs> Let me tell you. Don't, you don't have it. We'll just get into it later. You can just, just write it down. Um, no, but I, because I had a relationship that was so bad, the girl gave me two books, right? She was like, please read these two books. They're going to save our relationship. She gave me A Thousand and One Ways to Be Romantic and S&M 101. <laughs> yeah, how the fuck do you use those in tandem, right? <laughs> There's no such thing as romantic masochist. No one's going to be like, you're not going to be drive home tomorrow and turn on the radio and there's a smooth jam on you. You're like, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, girl. You know when you look up at me with those two black eyes and that ball gag in your mouth and you whisper, <laughs> yeah, safe word's orangutan. Do you guys have a safe word? <laughs> well, Jesus, they have a safe word. <laughs> That's just one? Well, all right. Hey, can I move in too? <laughs> I just want to listen. Three days? All right. So I'll see you guys Monday. Hey, it's me, that weird guy from MAGFest. <laughs> I'm here to fuck. <laughs> How many ladies here have ever been, and that was the same girl, like she went to a sex toy party, right? How many ladies here have ever been to a sex toy party? All right, calm down. I'm not Oprah. I'm not going to look under your chairs. You get a dildo. You get a dildo. You used to sell them? Were you door to door like Taylor? That's what you should be. You should knock on the door and go, excuse me, it's the lady of the house at home. And then you throw dirt on their carpet and you hit it with a dildo, I guess. I don't know. You got to buy that now. It's the dildo's dirty. Because, guys, we don't get that. You're never going to get an invite to Peter's Puff Pastry Pocket Pussy Party. <laughs> Jesus, you guys are weirdos. <laughs> I'm home, everybody. <laughs> You've been to a guy's sex? It's a... I can only imagine it's a bunch of guys eating bagel bites going, hey, put your dick in that thing. <laughs> well, because like I saw her on a Friday. I saw her on a Friday and I was like, I was like, so what are you doing tomorrow? And she was like, um, I'm going to a sex toy party. And I was like, oh, bone chance, right? And then when I saw her on, that means good luck. Uh, when I saw her on Sunday, I was like, I was like, so how was it? And she was like, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I was like, why? What happened? She was like, your mother was there. Oh. Yeah. And I was like, my mommy? <laughs> well, what did you do? And she was like, I bought everything she told me to. <laughs> and that is a frightening prospect because my mother is a fucking horrible gift giver, right? I can only imagine, she was like, I've cleaned his room, put this in his butt. Like, that's all. <laughs> like, one year I was living with her, and she did, I, well, I lived with her until I was the tender young age of 27. Uh, so, but she was like, uh, she gave me a bicycle repair kit for Christmas. I didn't have a fucking bike. <laughs> so I can only imagine what fresh hell she told my girlfriend to buy. And she was like, she made me get this stuff called peanuts butter. Does anybody know what peanuts butter is? Oh, I'm going to tell you. She was like, she was like, apparently it's this cream you're supposed to put on your penis so that when I'm giving you oral, I don't choke. And that's when I realized, guys, my mom really gets me. <laughs> what was my mom listening outside my door one night? And her, oh, not my baby boy. And like, runs to the kitchen to whip up a batch of penis butter. Like, is it ready? No, not ready. My sister comes in and licks the spoon to my mom's elbow because she's a whore. <laughs> Don't all that. Do you know her? She's a huge whore. Uh, <laughs> but I've been with my, I, I, have a, I have a fiance. Ah. We've been together for 11 years. 
<laughs> yeah, because if we get divorced, <laughs> I lose all my Batman shit. Um, <laughs> but see, there's things, like, I have buddies that, like, uh, like after two years, people, like, people are still, they don't ask you, like, is the magic still there, right? No, because I get that. At, like, the 10-year mark, people are like, is there still a spark there, right? And this is the story that I tell them. A couple weeks ago, my fiance and I were laying together uh, on the couch just watching TV, right? We're watching Netflix. I think it was the new uh, Voltron series, right? And I happened to look back at her, and she was looking good. Had, like, a nice tight top on and, like, some yoga pants. And it struck me how lucky I was. I mean, here's this smart, beautiful, funny woman that wanted nothing more than to just lay, lay with me on the couch on a Sunday and watch robot lions defeat space aliens, right? I truly am blessed. And then she farted. <laughs> and it wasn't like a cute little fweet that like women do sometimes when they're in the middle of a Care Bear stare or they're summoning unicorn wear, but like it was a full on like <laughs> like my mustache was wavering in the breeze. And right, she didn't even look at me while she was doing this, right? So I guess she could feel my eyes burning holes into her back, right? Because she turned around and she was like, <laughs> that one bubbled up the front. <laughs> yeah, I must have missed that day in health class. <laughs> Probably was like the last day or something. The teacher's like, all right, everyone, we've learned about how to have safe sex, and about how your bodies are changing. Oh, one more thing before I go. Women fart in their pussies. And just drops the mic and move on. <laughs> that my fiance, she trims. Like, do, do you trim? You trim? Yeah. Okay, good. Don't be embarrassed. Watch this. Watch. How many women in here don't trim? Crickets. You know why? Because they're all at home stroking their own snatch watches. Like, ooh, ooh, it's okay. Ooh, maybe the door to door dildo salesman will come. <laughs> <laughs> I asked that question once before to this young couple in the crowd, right? I was like, man, do you trim? And she stood up and got very offended. She was like, um, some women don't feel they need to trim down there. And like her boyfriend's eyes got real wide. And I was like, how long have you two been together? And he was like, this is our first date. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, spoiler alert. <laughs> then she powders. Do you ever powder? You don't ever, no, but what if, you're, what if it gets humid? You don't care. It's just a swamp down there. It's like Dagobah and your dungarees. You don't give a shit. There's a Yoda down there raising an X-wing out of you. Like, mm, there is no deuce, just deuce, deuce not. No. My fiance powders the shit out of her. She comes out of the bathroom. It looks like a colonial wig. It looks like her pussy signed the Declaration of Independence. She puts so much powder down there, every time she queefs, a ninja appears. <laughs> it's not funny. It's not, no, because all day long, I hear, cowabunga. Because it's Ninja Turtles. It's the secret of the use. Um, <laughs> one other thing, and then I'll get out of here. Uh, so you got, is he your first significant other you ever lived with? No. Okay. Is he yours? Ooh. Oh, hold on. Let's, let's just move on. I'm not here to break up couples. Oh, well, here we go. Let me get this chair right here. <sighs> you are not the father. Uh, but no, it, like, my fiance's the first significant other that I ever lived with, right? And there were things that I didn't know, certain intrinsic rights and truths as a man that you miss out on as soon as you live with a, a, a female, right? Like, the first thing to go, the ability to masturbate whenever you feel like it, right? That is gone, right? Because you guys now, you can enjoy your freedom, right? You could be flipping channels at 3.30 in the morning and hear the telltale drums of a Girls Gone Wild commercial. That bring ding 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 like, oh, get off me pants! Nope. Not anymore. Now what I want to do is become a covert op. Really get sick of beating over the ski mask on. So <laughs> the other day I got home from work and my fiance wasn't there. And I checked every nook and cranny. I went around like, sweetie, honey bear, princess Pookums. And there was no answer. And I was like, uno wata solo. Right? <laughs> I was getting so excited. I was throwing out lines from RoboCop at my dick. I'm like, dead or alive, you're coming with me. And let's step outside. And I buy that for a dollar. So, <laughs> so I sprinted in the spare bathroom that only I use. And there sitting on the counter was an expensive looking bottle of lotion that wasn't there earlier that day, right? So I actually thought to myself, God bless this woman. 
She knew I was going to want to masturbate today, so she bought me this expensive bottle of lube, right? Not realizing that was a $37 bottle of lube that Dr. Oz recommends she put on the corns on her feet. Yeah. And I went to town. <laughs> like, when I was done, the room was in utter chaos. There was lotion dripping off every surface. There was porn strewn about. There was a small fire just burning in the corner, right? And I actually thought to myself, my grown-up mind was like, I should really clean all this up and hide the evidence. And then my inner child was like, no, fuck it, let's go play video games, right? So I took the belt off my neck, and I went. <laughs> That's how I get down. Uh, and I went in to go play Call of Duty. Anybody here ever play Call of Duty? No? Three people? Okay. <laughs> no, but like, you guys know, whenever you're playing an online video game, there's a certain level of bravado that you have to maintain, right? Because you don't want these kids thinking you're a little fucking bitch, right? So you got to trash talk, and you got to be like, yeah, fucking suck a noob. Why don't you go tongue kiss your grandmother, you eight-year-old? Because you got to teach the kids. So I'm in there trash talking kids in between matches when my fiance comes home from work. She comes in the front door and makes a beeline to this empty bottle of lotion, okay? To this day, I have no clue how she knew, right? For all I know, some Oprah Yoda ghost appeared to her like, Brown, girl, he be fucking with your lotion, right? This is all I heard from the other room. I heard, and she SEAL Team 6 kicks the door open like Poof, and puts her face right up against my headset microphone and starts screaming at me, you dirty son of a bitch, I am sick of it. You use everything in this house to match up, right? You use all my foot cream, all the glitter lotion, all the mayonnaise. Who the fuck uses mayonnaise? <laughs> I am sick of it, Mr. Sick of It. And she just storms off, right? And the whole internet heard this. So after 10 seconds of complete silence, there's a 13-year-old kid go, man, I hate it when my mom does that. <laughs> All right, you guys, thank you very much. Check out the Laugh Finder podcast where me and fellow geek comics play Pathfinder. That's awesome. Thanks, man. Give it up for Tommy. So uh, we, we got, like, Are we talking now? Yeah, we, we do a little talk show. Okay, okay. Under the guise that some people are leaving, we don't want them to feel bad. Those people who are leaving, we don't oh. want to put a light on those people that are leaving. <laughs> it's all right. But yeah, if you guys, if people want to leave at this time, this is the, the time to do it. And then move forward into all the empty seats that are around. Yeah, there's a seat right next to Taylor. She'll tell you all about her job. Yes. <laughs> I, hey, look. Nothing but love for you. That's all. You're a lady of leisure. Ta Taylor, give me my pen back. <laughs> Why do you give me my pen back? What's... It wasn't, I'm not a pinata. You don't get to just take things I drop. <laughs> it was an accident. You may have deserved it, Taylor. <laughs> so, so tell me about this podcast while, while we have some time. Uh, it's me and six other geek comedians. Brian Preston, who you'll see later. Dorian oh, Gray. Uh, Jim Meyer. And, uh, and we'll always have a guest every week. We've had, um, we're actually going to get the head of the Hubble Space Telescope program to come on. And we just play uh, two hours of Pathfinder. And then break oh, wow. it up into different sections. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So who's the DM? Uh, Dorian Gray, who's not here, but he's an amazing okay. geek comic. So, so is it the same game each episode? Or? We're, we, well, the first season we just wrapped up at the beginning of this year, and it was, uh, it was all one campaign set. Gotcha. So, yeah. Awesome. Where can we find this? Uh, you can go to laughfinderpod.com or... Brian, do you got any cards? Brian, then there we go. Laugh Finder Pod. <laughs> I, have, I have cards if you're into podcasts and Pathfinder. Cards, if you're into cards. Yeah, you can come get one from me. Things Sharp Edges. I was going to end the show. That was hurtful. Part, yeah. That was hurtful. Not going to lie. I'm going to pretend like they're getting up to get cards. They are. They're getting. <laughs> Brian's right there. Brian. Oh. Exactly. Your Thank horn you. Is, your horn is broken. You need a. Not broken, but it ain't, uh, doing, me. It ain't doing a horn thing. <laughs> Drinking at Magfest? Yeah, you look like Howie Excuse Mandel and me? Little Monsters. <laughs> it's just, never saw uh, that. That joke was for us. <laughs> yeah, we get. So, yeah, the front row's now open. Uh, we won't make fun of you as much as we made fun of Taylor, <laughs> but... Yeah. If a comic <laughs> asks you a question, keep it simple. Yeah. <laughs> Sim <laughs> simple rules. <laughs> there we go. We got a pirate. Yeah. How's it going? What's up? That's a cool pirate hat. We have What's in the... That's not a parrot. What do you got in the hat? Oh, that's awesome. That's the way to roll. He's a poke pirate. Poke pirate. <laughs> All right, so give it up uh, one more time for Tommy. Thanks, guys. Perfect. Fantastic job.